So before we dig into the good stuff, I will talk a little bit about myself. Uh, as you can read, my name is uh, Manuel Erikstam. I've been working on, uh, for Solidify for the last two and a half years, I would say. Coming in February, it's three years. Uh, I primarily work as a consultant within DevOps and Azure. I've been doing IT related stuff for the last uh, 20 plus years. Uh, all the way from being a support technician uh, to doing development and working as a configuration manager and working with Volvo University as an adjunct coach. So I've been doing a lot of different things. Uh, when I'm off work, I spend my time mostly <laughs> in front of the computer doing other stuff. Uh, you can see later in my demo, I'll have some stuff that I've done on my spare time. But uh, today we're going to talk about uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, so we're going to kick off uh, briefly by going through the history uh, of how GitHub Actions came to be, and then some concepts uh, around the technologies. Um, I'm also going to show you some workflows. I mean, that's the base of this, of course. The workflows are where you run GitHub Actions and how they relate to what we call jobs and steps. And the major part of this uh, uh, roadshow presentation will be a d demonstration uh, how you do CICD uh, in GitHub with the built-in workflows. And then wrapping it up, uh, I will talk about some other automation tasks that we can perform. And if you have any questions around uh, or you want to stop me if you can't see or hear anything please stop me right away if you have other quest questions we're going to have a little session afterwards uh, or you can post them in the chat and magnus can take them or if you really feel that like you need to stop me please stop me so to start out um, github actions is the built-in automation platform for github uh, and to a great extent, it replaces the third party CI CD products that we, we know from GitHub, like Circle CI and Travis CI, uh, and as well as Azure Pipelines, of course. Uh, that's been a part of uh, GitHub uh, CI CD for a while. Um, but uh, the built in is it's great for CI CD. But uh, as it didn't start out as a CI CD platform, it has a lot of different other things you can automate uh, on in spite of, I mean, instead of building uh, uh, and uh, uh, deploying as uh, I guess that's why you would call it workflows instead of pipeline or, or something that it does in Jenkins and so on. Uh, but workflow is the same, the equivalent of, of a pipeline and the other tools. Um, so the workflow files are committed into re the repository in GitHub and it's treated as any other file, uh, any other code file, that is. Um, so if we take a little brief peek under the hood, uh, we can see that actions uh, started out as Linux containers only. Uh, but after some uh, refactoring and rework that GitHub did, it now supports uh, full virtual machines uh, uh, for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. The asterisk on Mac OS is uh, it's because of Mac OS is a bot service, and it's running on real Macs in a data center. Uh, this is, of course, due to Apple licensing that they only allow hardware, Apple hardware, to to run on one machine, one. OS. Um, we can either build uh, cross platform actions in JavaScript, it's a clean, plain JavaScript, or use the container type action uh, and use any language within. But unfortunately, the containers are only for Linux, so there's no Windows support for, for containers yet. So, the different 
uh, things about uh, running with public rep repos and private repos. Uh, uh, forks on public repositories can be very dangerous. Uh, uh, I mean, it can run dangerous code on your self-hosted runner. If you have a self-hosted runner uh, in, 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 I mean, in your own data center, because it opens up a, a, a vector there that you so uh, things can happen within your uh, inside your data center or rather. So if you create a pull request that executes code in a workflow that run inside your network, I mean, it has access to all your resources and can potentially be bad for you. This is, however, not the issue with GitHub hosted actions because uh, they are uh, uh, always a clean and isolated in machine and it's always destroyed at the end of the job execution. Um, you get free uh, access to hosted runners on public repos, so you don't really have to run the self-hosted runners there anyways, because it's all free. Uh, when running on private repositories, you get free minutes on the hosted uh, runners uh, according to your license plan. It can be from 2,000 min free minutes for the free plan. and uh, it's up to 50,000 build minutes on uh, on enterprise plans. Something to note, though, is that uh, there's what we call minute multipliers uh, on Windows and Mac OS. So if your build time is 10 minutes, it will charge you 20 minutes uh, on Windows and 10 times that, of course, uh, from what you see on Mac OS. So uh, you're spending 10 times when you run on Mac. The benefits with hosted runners is, of course, that they're maintained completely by, by GitHub, all the way from the bare metal to the runner software. And the downside is, of course, that you need to be install all your dependencies each time, so it has to be prepped for every run. If you have custom code, of course, if you don't have any custom code and only run small parts of, of Node, perhaps you, it doesn't really matter, but if you have big uh, builds, you will probably think of, of building time. So you probably would uh, either try to buy some caching um, uh, or uh, on the self-hosted runner, of course. So self-hosted runners can be pre-installed and with necessary software and does, doesn't need to be clean between the builds. So you can cache node, mo node modules and uh, whatever you need. They are, of course, your own responsibility when it comes to um, uh, setting them up and maintaining the, uh, the OS and the patching and all that. The only thing that's automated is uh, uh, the, uh, this, the runner in itself that updates. So if we look a little bit, uh, an example of a workflow file. Um, so it shows you that uh, actions are uh, individual tasks and they're combined to create a job that run uh, your workflow. So the smallest part is the action. The action could also be just a pure, uh, I mean, the step it can be an action or it can just be a, a command line run. Uh, as you see in beneath the inner, uh, rectangle that it's just a run command here. It doesn't have to be a, an action that it's picked up from another repository. Uh, and uh, this the workflow folder is automatically created first time uh, you create uh, a workflow uh, when you start out. So you that's automatic. Uh, if you're like me, uh, I'm used to working with uh, Azure uh, pipelines. There's an open source tool and a website that implements that tool that you can use to convert your YAML pipelines into a GitHub workflow YAML uh, syntax. 
it's of course a work in progress, so you don't ex you can expect that all the tasks uh, you have can be converted automatically, but it's a good starting point uh, if you already have Azure Pipelines YAML. Uh, as we will see later in the demo, I have uh, a repository that has both. So that's all for slides uh, now it's demo time and i will show you how to do ci cd builds uh, on a node.js app uh, on a uh, to azure on a hosted runner and then we will look into a, a mono mono game based game uh, and see how we can build that uh, with a self hosted runner and then finally we'll wrap it up with me showing you some other automation examples uh, there will be pretty pointless uh, examples but it sort of shows you what you can do uh, with automation in the platform it's mostly uh, yeah, i mean it's not super vital stuff that i'm going to show you but it's uh, in, you can get the concept of what uh, automation can do for you Okay, so now I'm going to switch to my browser and see if that works. Can you still see my screen or my browser screen? Yes, it looks fine. It's a good size on the font as well, or do we mean make it even larger? It's okay for me. Anyone else who wants it bigger? I think it's fine. Great. Okay, so this is uh, the first CI CD part on the Linux hosted runner, the demo, and the demo is from uh, Edward Thompson, a GitHub uh, manager. Uh, he um, had this in his presentation a while back, and I thought it was pretty good to have that, so I forked his repository. Uh, and the original is, is there from Thompson, but uh, uh, I've created some more stuff in my repository, so hence I forked it. So, and uh, in in this uh, repository, uh, the the master branch is is, is named Sorry. May. Yeah. <coughs> Christian wants it a little bigger, so please. Okay. Is that good enough for you? Perfect. Cool. So, as I said, uh, the the master branch in this repository is uh, is named main. Uh, that's actually a fairly common practice nowadays. Uh, at least uh, what I've seen from uh, open source projects from the US, especially. Uh, I think uh, there is a uh, one reason is that it's uh, it's sort of common to call the master branch main for other source control repositories uh, but it's also that the word master is uh, is implying implying that you have a master and a slave and i think uh, that they, they try to be more politically correct in the states nowadays so main is what we usually call it nowadays in in those uh, i mean it's equivalent of master in git of course so uh, the the interesting parts uh, from git when it comes to github actions are in this folder called workflows so let's take a look inside there and here we have uh, a couple of uh, yaml files uh, one is the continuous delivery part uh, and one is a, a little automation uh, yaml file and then there's that ci build that is called node.js yaml so we'll take a look at that one uh, and we can see uh, the trigger part and what it triggers on. It triggers on uh, push and pull requests uh, on the main branch. So it's essential a CI build uh, that's triggered both on pull requests and even if you uh, check in code directly. I guess uh, in live situations, you probably uh, 
one is to have pull requests only for main and you can do push for other things. And then you have your seed is continuous delivery build that will trigger on uh, to build the main branch rather. But it's just uh, this is for simplicity. So as I said, we combine our steps into uh, the jobs. So here's the first build job. And we are using something that's called matrix, uh, which makes it sort of a multiplier. So it will run my build uh, a couple of times. First, it will run on uh, th this matrix called OS, which is all the three different runners, uh, the ver varieties of runners that exist on the hosted. And then uh, the matrix strategy will be both on OS and on the node version. So we will essentially have uh, three builds for each runner. So it will be in total nine, nine builds here uh, as we want to test it on all the different OSs and on the different node platforms. It's just mostly for showing you how uh, the strategy of matrix, uh, matrixes work. So every time uh, a build for each uh, variety, will do all these steps. So the first thing what happens is that uh, it will kick off an action, the checkout action, and, and then it will uh, have a node set up for each node version. Uh, and then it will kick off a build for each uh, variety. Uh, and it will run a clean install that's NPM CI, and then the NPM run, the build, and then the test part. So to kick off a build, uh, there's no manual trigger, as far as I can find at least, uh, but so we have to either, we can rerun old builds, or you have to do a code change. So let's do a code change. Uh, for instance, in the readme file in the UI here, uh, this is just to show you yeah, I mean, it had, you be, normally you would probably work in your your, um, your local computer and do the the complete uh, adding and committing in the normal Git flow, but I'm just gonna do it fast here and edit the file right in the UI, and we're just gonna, uh, I guess, add the space. That's enough, and I will set. Uh, well, just leave the default commit message. I will commit that. Now, when I go to the actions tab, here is where uh, we can see what happens. Uh, I will look at my Node.js filter, a filter on my CI build. And I can see it's yellow, it means it's running. We can click it to open up the build in itself. And here we can see that it actually shows all those nine builds and running them in parallel. Yeah. So while that's building, it doesn't take it so long time. We can look could you, at. Could you select yep. the build and check the logs? Yes, I'm just cool. going to do that. <laughs> oh, sorry. So they're pretty fast, this build, so I'll see if we can pick up another build that's running. So when you click a, a build, it, you can get the log and you can get some details. You can get details from uh, each step, uh, what's happened. Uh, you can also see uh, while it's running, uh, you can't see so much if there's no output. Uh, but here we can see it runs the tests, for instance. Uh, and uh, you can see that we're all passing. Uh, here is a build that's still waiting, I guess, or oh, it's see, uh, I update my UI and it builds right away. So, but it's the last two here. It goes fairly fast. And they're all the same inside, of course, because it's 
uh, a copy of uh, the same build with different uh, input of which runner to run on and which node version to, to build. So it's almost done. This is a CI build, so I don't uh, really save anything here. It's just more of running it and testing it. You could, I guess, save the artifacts somewhere if you want to download them. Uh, but we're going to just shortly look, uh, look into how we push this stuff uh, into Azure and on the, on the other uh, uh, demo I do on on self-hosted pipelines or um, workflows rather uh, I will show you that uh, how we artif can save the artifact as well in, inside the uh, the website uh, in, in the same way you do for uh, uh, Azure DevOps I usually use Azure DevOps as my reference because that's where I've been working most of my time so while we wait for that, we can go into, I think it should be done now, yeah, right. So that build is uh, done. Uh, the next part is the, the uh, Azure YAML file or the, the, the continuous delivery. Uh, so this, we have to look in the code to watch uh, what's, to look what's in there. So let's open the Azure YAML file. And here we have a different trigger and it triggers on uh, that we create a release. Uh, it's in sense in GitHub, this release is it's sort of like you tag something and keep the source code in a zip package in that release. You can do other things as well, but this is how you can start out with at least when you create the release. So in this, you have to think of it as a, I mean, there's just two jobs. One job is to actually deploy the Azure resources in Azure. Uh, so to use as an ARM template to, uh, to create or update the, uh, the environment where we're going to deploy the code to. Uh, I have prepared this already because it takes a lot of time to to build the Azure resources the first time, uh, but you could start clean, almost clean, uh, like I would say. I would need another step here if I wanted to to, to start completely clean, but uh, uh, since my SPN is uh, uh, service principle security is sort of connected to the resource group because I want to limit the uh, the vector of attack vector of, of from this build. Just uh, that's how I did it. So I use a role based access to that resource group in the SPN. Uh, you could, I uh, guess, have an SPN that it's open uh, for everything. Then you can create the resource group as well from the build. But I limit that. So uh, what happens is that we log in. First, check out the code, of course, in this first step, and it logs in to Azure uh, with that credential secret that I have stored in uh, uh, in GitHub. I will show you that in just one second, uh, and then it deploys an ARM template uh, to Azure by running the Azure CLI, so that uh, this command uh, is what I run. Uh, so I hard coded uh, the resource group here because I use the SPN that's role based access to this specific resource group. Uh, so the first job is setting up Azure. The second job, uh, it's dependent on that the uh, the first uh, job is, is successful, so it needs that uh, to be run before. If you don't have this step, they will try to run in parallel, which of course is not what we want. We want the 
environment there first. Um, so in the second step, it does um, a new uh, login to Azure because when I push up the code there, uh, uses my credentials again that I've stored. Uh, let's quickly go there. So, Mane, we have a question when you have time. So, tell me when is you ready? Yeah, we can do it now. Since uh, yeah. So, Luna is right is writing, and for software releases, you can build executables and such in actions, right? Or do you do that with a compiler, like Visual Studio compiler, or such, or just upload it, or how does it work? So, maybe telling us a bit about what's installed on the build server. Yes. So, in this first part, this. Uh, calculator it's just a node uh, uh, node uh, application so it compiles uh, when you when you run npm uh, uh, build i guess if you look at the first part um, here so the building and compiling is this thing when running npm and then uh, npm is pre-installed on the build server right Yes, yeah, so we we uh, set up in this uh, action called node setup. We are ensuring that node is installed on the uh, the runner. And it's the same thing when we do Visual Studio builds, right? Because Visual Studio is installed on the build servers. Um, that is correct. Yes. Yes. Uh, I will show you that. Uh, of course, I have a self-hosted runner, so I had to install it myself. But uh, in the other example, I have a, a, a NMS build kicking off the build. And I will talk a little about the, the differences shortly. Great. Yeah. And then we have another question from Matthias Folke yeah. about multi-stage pipelines. If we have multiple environments that I want to push this to, is there something similar as multi-stage pipelines yet? So. I mean, the concept of multi-stage pipeline is there, but uh, I don't think we have the same uh, 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 gates as we have in Azure DevOps. Correct me if I'm wrong, Magnus, but that's what yeah. I... Yeah, but I, I know it's coming and they're working on it, and I don't have a release date for it, but we will have multi-stage pipelines in GitHub yeah. Actors as well. But so I'm you not sure do... Yet. You could do a multi-stage pipeline in the sense that they can, we can have multiple jobs that deploy to different um, environments, but they will, and we can have the it, the need clause, so they will be zero in in serial, but they won't. They will always deploy if say the tests are okay. It will always deploy to to production in that sense. So it's it's good if you do trunk-based development, right? All the way to, to production, but then you can do it sort of multi-stage in that sense, and having having a unit test and an integration tests running on your staging environment before you're pushing to production. But you can't have a, a manual override, so, so to speak, yet. Okay, great, thanks. But, uh, then you will do like this matrix strategy, and you will add your SPNs and resource groups in that matrix strategy as well. You could do that, yes, for sure. Uh, but then, I mean, if you do matrices, uh, and and then, uh, yeah, so that environment could stop. They they will run in parallel, but for different environments, you can do that. But if you want to serialized, you would need to set them up in different jobs, and having the needs, uh, the clause uh, as we did in the in the Azure YAML file, that I need the first job to be ready. Uh, before we're kicking off uh, uh, the second job, right? So in that sense, we could do several build and deploys that has a, a, this needs and it will kick off dev build first. And if those tests are OK, it will deploy to, to staging or, or QA and, and so on to production or else they will all, if I don't have this, they will all try to push to all the environments in, in parallel. Cool. And will I have to do code duplication? So each and every environment that I want to deploy to, I need to copy paste this, or can I do like a template thing that I include from another action? So yeah, so I don't actually in Azure DevOps, of course, you can do templating in YAML builds, 
I actually haven't did, looked into that. I guess you could point out an action. Not sure. I have to look into that. But All right, thanks. Should be a similar way to do it because there are the same developers on GitHub Actions as in, YAM, uh, in, in Azure DevOps. So they probably thought about thought about that. So, as I said, uh, this is a, has a trigger on release. So we have to create a release to get this to trigger. So let's do that. Uh, and on the main screen, we have this releases thing here. So I mean, it's more or less than a. Uh, an annotated tag more or less, but it triggers a specific event. So if I create a new release, I will call version 1.0. I can do some title and describe. I can add some files and, and stuff, and I can also say if it's, um, it's a pre-release or not, but I will just publish this release as it is. And what it does, it takes the latest code and, and zips it in here as assets. And if you look at actions, uh, now we've triggered that Azure workflow since it has a trigger on release. And here it starts the first, you, you don't even see the second job here as you only it only starts with the first job since the second job has that needs clause so until this job has finished you won't even see the, the next job so what that this does is what i told you before it logs into azure and uh, uh, deploys the arm template uh, and as you can see here uh, this azure cli uh, action is a container action so it actually brings up that Azure CLI container and runs that those commands inside there. Yeah, and that's, you don't really see that. You don't know beforehand if it's a, just a pure JavaScript action or a container action. You have to look at that specific repository. So the actions are in GitHub themselves in, in repositories. So you can, uh, that, that's how GitHub works. It picks up the actions from that repository, all that source code and runs whatever you have coded. There's a special way of doing when you do GitHub, when you create your own GitHub actions. I won't really cover that here. That's more advanced and should probably take up another half an hour just to how to create your own actions, but that's fully possible. And there's a lot of information on the web, how to do it. And there's a lot of actions already uh, in those GitHub repositories with actions already that people have written and simplifying your your builds and CI/CD. So it's a little time consuming this, but it now it goes up to Azure and checks that the environment is exactly as I've specified in the ARM template. And if it, it has drifted, it will change it back to whatever is set up in the template. Uh, we can take a look at the template files if you want. So I added this template repository. I have two files, one with the template and all, and then the parameters that I, I need for my setup. I created these. Uh, not by hand, but by extracting them from Azure when creating it, uh, the resources there. So they're machine made, but you could make them your own, of course. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm lazy. And it's in JSON format, uh, you can see here. And So go into the portal. Manu, when we have time, we have two two more questions from Matthias Folke. Yeah, let's take them now while we yeah. wait for the build. It's perfect. Matthias, Matthias, can you take them yourself? 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, so first off, the releases. Is it possible to also include the work item data on what is included in that release? Uh, so yes, uh, let's see. You talked about this part, right? The release part? Yes, exactly. Uh, so I if guess there has been any issues that have been resolved or similar. I wonder if that data is there. I don't have any issues now, so I don't know exactly. But I don't think so. I'm not sure, to be honest. We can create an issue, but then I have to have a, a commit on that. Yeah, I uh, guess we get into that when we have that session on agile ways of working. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. Be not part of this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then uh, secondly, uh, when we are running the Azure deployments in the container, uh, have we seen any performance uh, issues compared to when we run it natively in the Azure DevOps environments? No, I haven't seen any uh, real performance. So execution time is about the same if I run it. Yes, I mean, it just runs the commands in, in on a, I mean, it's similar to when you in in Azure you run the CLI in the cloud shell. It's sort of what you get uh, a container image where you more or less where you run your stuff. But there is no heavy startup uh, cost of creating that container in the actions. No, no. I mean, it's so small that uh, Azure CLI. It's uh, so it doesn't really take that long time. You, as you saw in the it kicked off that fairly fast. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong repository, sorry. Uh, no, that's actions. Uh, the first part, uh, uh, I mean, of course, that's the longest time is one minute, but that minute is, of, of course, already connected to yeah. Uh, to Azure through the the container, so and just checking all the resources. So yeah, one minute sounds similar to what you would get in Azure DevOps. Yeah, so I think it's you don't have to really care about that time that it takes to kick off that. But if you have a large uh, container action, of course, that could you make it <laughs> worse for you, but in this, it's just this really small Linux. Uh, if you look at this container that's there, the, uh, the Azure CLI, it's very small. You, like, could it be one of the smallest Linuxes they have and then just the Azure CLI installed, so it doesn't really take that lo long time. And, and the build, uh, the part here is also the longest time is deploying the to the Azure web app. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in that sense, uh, Azure is the slowest part here. <laughs> I Thank am you. on the wrong uh, directory. I found okay, right, so I have to. So, Mana, we have about 15 minutes left. Yes, I have about five or five, six minutes left to go. Good. Then we have a question about conceptual difference between GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines. So we can take that when you're finished with your demo. This is your one who has a question about that. Yeah. I have to pass my password correctly. No. I just wanted to show you the calculator app. Uh, so this is what I deployed through Azure, uh, through that GitHub action. That's just the calculator Java. So to wrap that, that was it uh, through CICD for a hosted runner. And now I'll just sort of speed through the the other part, uh, which is the continue uh, CI, CI, uh, CI on my hosted uh, self hosted runner. Uh, and this is a, a, 
a mono game that has the Azure pipelines. It used to be in Azure, uh, Azure DevOps, but I moved it over to, to GitHub. So I started out by moving the repository, but building in Azure. So I still have it here. So com by comparison, we can see that the builds are, are working in, in, in both ways, right? So uh, this is the the build part of the CI build with, that's in the self-hosted runner that's inside the GitHub. And you can see here it runs on self-hosted. Uh, it has the same uh, trigger, trigger part. Uh, and here you can see what we talked about, uh, about MS build. Um, and it uses uh, a, an action made by Microsoft to find uh, MS build, whatever, which version of my, uh, Visual Studio you have. So it's equivalent to vsware.exe. And it finds that folder where MS build is. Uh, and runs. Uh, uh, my code here. It, it doesn't have VS build in that sense, uh, as a, not yet at least, but it, it it runs MS build actions on the solution file. Uh, and then I do an artifact upload. I uh, did a little hard coding here just to get the code there. Uh, the files, the bits and the pieces, you would probably have uh, variables here in a real scenario. And code, let's uh, edit some code. Uh, let's go read me here as well. Simplest part. I'm going a little faster, I'm sorry. Just wanted to show you that it kicked off that build. Uh, I also have a pull request build, um, but I don't think I have time to show that. Perhaps, what do you think? I mean, it, the pull request did. Uh, build it kicks off the Azure pipeline builds as well. So I would have both builds running uh, as a, I wanted to check that they were complete, but now I, it just runs the CI build. And there's something wrong here because I know what it is now, finally. And it's of course my uh, build service turned off because I have an auto shutdown on that and I didn't start it for the demo. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. So, so that will take some time to start and run. So I guess we can look at the results after. I'll just uh, show you the last part uh, that I had was um, uh, other types of aut automation. And here I have another part of automation for this repository, Hobomines. Yeah, so I'm going to create a new issue. Yeah. Test. Nation. Hello. And when I submitted that issue, uh, a new workflow uh, will kick since I have this greeting workflow here. If you look at the workflows for that, it has a trigger on issues. So every time an issue is done, I'm running this first interaction action. So, so in that there's a JavaScript that will um, do some changes here. Let's see, I think it should have done. No, it's not yet. Let's see if it's slow, I'm too fast. go. So we need to build a little bit because it sent some data. But I triggered this uh, workflow by 
creating an issue. And the same goes if I would create a, a new pool request. Uh, uh. Oh no, that was not the right part. I am uh, commenting my the pull request and by doing that comment uh, I kicked off another workflow as well uh, it's that the honk workflow now we can see the test automation on the issue is done so let's open it and we can see that the github the bot has uh, given me a message uh, on the user's first issue this is why it's my first issue so it messaged me uh, this from an automation uh, workflow and it has nothing to do with the build in, in, in that sense so you can interact with uh, any uh, trigger in, in github there's a lot of different triggers types for, for project removing issues and a lot of things and let's look at the pull request oh wrong one sorry we can open it to see if it was run and it replaced my uh, my action or my comment with this so it removed my comment and added this instead uh, as an irritating uh, honk from that game untitled goose game okay so we speed up in the end but that's cool. it Let's see if they so just. Uh, we can we take the questions now, or do you want to? I just wanted to see if the uh, the build kicked off. I guess it did, right? I just wanted to show you that th th we have the artifacts uh, in the same way as we do in in Azure DevOps, so we can. Uh, download that zip file in the same way we do in Azure DevOps on the artifact drop. And here's that code compiled and ready to run. OK, so I'm finished. Great. Thank you, man. It was good. So we have two questions that I think we should address. The first one is from Johan Clausen. Do you want to ask it yourself, Johan? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> You showed us some conceptual difference uh, between uh, Azure Pipelines and uh, GitHub Actions. We have, we have the triggers, uh, and you also have uh, the, the login ability and share your, your uh, session throughout Actions. In, in uh, uh, Azure Pipelines, you have a, a process per, per task, so to speak. So you have a run uh, Azure PowerShell task. You know. Ash, uh, a AZ uh, CLI task and so forth. Are there any other uh, conceptual differences that you are aware of that I should uh, be be uh, wary about if I plan to move from Azure pipelines to GitHub Actions? Well, I mean, to start out with, I, I would say that GitHub Actions are not uh, not feature parity with Azure DevOps yet. I mean, they're come, they're moving <coughs> there, but there's a lot of actions not existing, so you would have to write a lot of command line stuff. I mean, that's, I mean, it's not really a, a difference in that way because they probably will develop these over time. Uh, but conceptually, I think it's fairly similar in that sense to Azure DevOps other than I mean, you could do. I think most of the things you do in, in Azure DevOps, I think you could sort of do. Yeah. Um, 
you know. But, but, but the trigger trigger thing is one thing, and then also that you can the other, that you can do other kinds of automation fairly easy in GitHub. That's a difference as well. But that's. I mean, there's not stopping you from doing it in Azure DevOps, but it's not there sort of out of the box. You have to run REST API calls and, and, and listen to web hooks and do completely different things uh, uh, as it is sort of built for that type of triggering in GitHub. That's the biggest difference, of course. So I think you can work around all the different stop things you have when uh, uh, they get up to, to to speed with that sort of uh, multi-stage pipelines and and having some uh, uh, that's uh, I mean what's it called uh, approval points and all that then it will be much better. Okay, thanks. We have also one more question from Marcelo about licenses, and that is users that have MSD and enterprise subscriptions do they have access to GitHub Enterprise? And the answer to that is by default, no, if you have an old MSD subscription. But if you do you a renewal, there is an option that you can buy uh, MSDN with GitHub Enterprise. So when, next time you renew your MSDN licenses, you should go into that. And I don't know if that is possible to do when you already signed your MSDN license, if you or if you or if you have you only can do it when you are you sign up for new ones. So, do we have any more questions? If not, thank you, Manu, for a nice presentation. And thank you. the recording is going to be down, uploaded to our YouTube channel, and I'll post it after the meeting in this channel as well. So, do we have a, I think we have one more picture, maybe? Yeah, that's what I'm going to show you. Yeah. So, in August, we have Jasper. I think we have Jasper with us here. Are you there, Jasper? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, are you prepared for? You haven't started thinking about this yet, I guess. No. <laughs> oh. But I uh, but I picked up. Uh, someone said something about uh, being able to see issues possibly included in the release summary or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so I made a note of that, and I'll try to include it in that session. Yep. Great. Thank you, everybody, and have a nice summer, and hopefully we'll get in touch in August. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.